we got after it these last couple of days. A lot of yelling, a lot, a lot of physicality, which is good. We need it. You know, it's kind of just thrown into to a, a situation where we're trying to figure it out. But now we can kind of we're squaring on a couple of things, a lot of things offensively and defensively. These last few days I've been great. Uh, you know, just really again on the same page, going up against each other. I think we started to find the right balance of, uh, you know, how to play. Uh, together, I think everybody understands their role, uh, and you know that's that's how we're going to win. Remember when the Sixers got hard and things looked great? They started off going 5-0, and but since then they've barely been over 500 in games he's played. And Harden himself has struggled with his shooting. His numbers are down about 15% from what they were during that 5-0 and start. So, Tim, I mean, now's, this is it, right? I mean, the, yeah. the, the playoffs starting tomorrow. Do, when you look at Harden and Embiid together, do you see a tandem that can make a title run? Listen, they're clearly capable. You're talking about two of the most dominant players in the league at their positions, and they're the two most important positions. So, yes, they're clearly capable, but if you look at recent history here over the last couple of weeks and the way James Harden has played, there's, there's a reason to be skeptical. There's a reason for everybody in Philadelphia to be a little bit skeptical. That's why everybody's on the edge of their seat waiting to see what happens Saturday night six o'clock because you look at the Sixers and the tone they need to set early in that series particularly knowing they're going to have to go on the road to Toronto without Matisse Thibel a key guy in their rotation their best perimeter defender so it's critical they get off to a good start in that series and if you look at the last six games James Harden has only two more made field goals than turnovers in a six game stretch so are they capable yes but way they're playing right now, unless something dramatically turned around here in this week of practice that they've had, that they're alluding to in that sound, I'm a little bit doubtful about how James Harden's going to perform in this series and all the pressure in the world is on him, despite what he says, which is he's got nothing to prove. I think he's got everything to prove, and the city of Philadelphia's waiting on it. Yeah, so, I mean, you mentioned that. Like, this this is a high level of – why is there so much pressure on James Harden heading into these playoffs? Well, I think a couple of reasons. First of all, I think people look at his playoff track record. There have been moments before, particularly in Houston, when he was on teams good enough to make a run to the finals, potentially win a championship. And he had some tough games and some big moments for the Rockets. So th he's got the history. But then on top of it, it's everything this franchise went through since last year when they lost to Atlanta and all the Ben Simmons drama. And basically the Sixers turning down a lot of trades over the summer into the fall because they were specifically trying to get this player for this moment to pair with Joel Embiid. So everybody thinks Daryl Morey's all in, Doc Rivers is all in, everybody's all in on this pairing. That's why there's more pressure on Harden because they could have made other deals that if this fails and they lose in the first round and he doesn't play well, a lot of people are going to be wondering if they should have made one of those other deals in the summer for pieces that maybe fit a little bit better. So that's why there's more pressure, I think, on James Harden this in this postseason than there ever has been. You mentioned the Matisse-Thibel situation, not eligible to play in the road games in this series in Toronto because he's not fully vaccinated. What kind of effect does that have? It's enormous because he's got length and he's the guy that you take and you say go take this particular player out of a quarter because you're just going to drape him you're going to face guard you're going to deny he's so good at getting beat off the dribble or a ball screen and because of his length staying with the play and bothering shooters from behind so who does that mean that means you don't get him for stretches on the road against Pascal Siakam who the Sixers have had a hard time dealing with as it is Fred Van Vliet is a guy that is playoff tested he comes through seems like the, the, the most when they need him the most he's a guy that can get you 15-16 points in a quarter and now you don't have Thibel on the road to guard him and I think that's the biggest area they're going to feel that he's the guy that Thibel would get um, Scotty Barnes another guy he'd guard so it's just across the board the number of players that Matisse Thibel can affect and, he, and look you're talking about the playoffs if you make a guy 10% less efficient offensively you've done your job as a defender and it gives you a better chance to win road games so it's a big deal that's why I think imperative they win both games in Philadelphia not even a split is good enough to go on the road without him thank you for watching ESPN on YouTube for live streaming sports and premium content subscribe to ESPN plus